Well, hello and welcome to Gimlism. Let's check out the next little Giml battle, shall we? Gimlism. All right. So here we have the Zenith, Zenith Star by Star Reach. This is a flying creature, so that's pretty cool. And we're gonna check out some weapons it has. Now it has the fleet colors and. The <laughs> It got spawned with the fleet colors of uh, the army of Jimadism, which I have a tutorial if you want to know how to add that as a secondary option, I can show you uh, in that tutorial. But in anyways, we should be checking out this little beast here before we get into the battle, just to see what we're having. And to of course check it abides by the rules. Interesting. So here we have tracer rounds, solid warhead bodies. Okay. All right, AP, explosive, and sabo. And it's just uh, some stable stuff for the different guns. Well, we have the different guns set up here. Um, I think we should just check out a little bit quickly here. We can do a little left-right cut. I think that can be pretty interesting just to have a quick check. Interesting. Very nice indeed. Looks to be pretty decent, I'd say. Well, it's uh, gonna be Sandblaster. Gonna be really interesting to see if the um, angles we will get are gonna be good or if the angles will kinda not hit it. If we are not able to hit this, we're just gonna be slowly sandblasted away, I'd suspect. Uh, but if we are able to kind of hit this thing. I do think it's gonna go down pretty quickly. Anyways, we have a little hut here. Light off, press right ACB. Lights on, press left ACB. Well, then we should turn on the lights so we can see it with the lights because of course it's going to spawn without the lights because otherwise it's not gonna be very legal, is it? We have some, like, police feeling here. <laughs> oh, I like these guns here, that's... <laughs> that would be a beautiful 3D print, wouldn't it? This craft is an improved upon the decommissioned Hypernova hull, brought from Scarlet Dawn Nether Year. Well, very old. I don't know if we have more interiors. Yeah, it seems to be legal, so let's go to the battle. Alright, let's get into the first battle here. So, I think we can see the Venice uh, Sunnist star. Oh no, I, I realize I need to spawn this a little bit higher up. It's a airship after all, 200 meters maybe. Lie to team. And there we go. <laughs> so here we have this Venice, uh, Zenith star. I seem to have trouble pronouncing this. Anyways, it looks pretty amazing. Uh, looks very modern. It looks very spaceshipy. I think our good old friend Xavier Crow would like, really enjoy this design. Well, anyways, I guess we'll just spawn, start the battle, see what happens. Now it gets uh, some colors I selected, but whatever. Oh, we have some active uh, moving around here. We got pulse lasers too. I kind of missed those when checking it out. Bam! Something heavy died on the gim layer. Let's slow down time. See what's happening here. Oh well. <laughs> Alright, so here we have the Zan blastings. These, these are some Sabo heads with a lot of uh, fins and stuff. Let's see here. It's gonna be pretty cool. I wonder what kind of killed us, killed something very much. I don't think we have any chance of. Uh... Hoo hoo! Look at that. We're dropping blocks, mate. Hmm. Poor thing. So. It is hitting pretty hard. Gonna be interesting to see in the second round kinda what 
did this type of damage early on. It's gonna be pretty quick. It's only been 26 seconds. And a Millennium Zenith Star does have the lead. Anyways, let's go back to regular speed here. Man, sandblasters are nasty. Oh. <laughs> and I guess we're gonna we can follow these cram shells, right? And they're not gonna hit because this thing has some active projectile avoidance. So if we can shoot this thing down with a laser. It's gonna be game over for the Gimla, I believe that. Fortunately, the Gimla has a pretty decent laser, and uh, the Zenith Star does have smoke, of course, but it's moving pretty quickly, so we can kind of burn through this, can we? Alright. We, are we firing properly here? Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Next sand storm is incoming here. <laughs> the era can't do nothing against this sand blasting through here. All right. I wonder, do we have like? I think we have kind of... This is the faster we can do. Game speed 0.67, 68. Right. Some decent FPS. Oh. <laughs> I do think that the Vigoletta Mark IV here is just gonna be a really heavy contributor to a potential win for, for the Gimlet's part. <laughs> this cannon is pretty good. And it's like the only thing that's doing like reliable damage at this point. Look at it. We're so blasted. Luckily we have so many outputs for the laser. But the Gimli is down to 87 percentages and the Star Reach Millennium Zenith. She's still up at like 92. And it's moving up and down. Look at that. It's lar uh, like our Vigoletta ain't hitting too often either. See that? It's like trying to target, but it's missing most of the shots since it's moving up and down. Man, we're like always aiming at the wrong spot. Look at that. They're not fast enough. It's only the laser that has any chance. I'll just want to pause this thing. Ooh, though, we're targeting hot blocks, though, and hot blocks means some important things here. We're gonna dig through to the rail system powering the sandblaster. That's a big ass rail system. Unfortunately for the Gimli, it seems that the packs are offline. Man, if the star. Zenith Star would uh, be located at the Gimlet's weak side, it would have like 100% chance of winning, I think. Oh, we're digging through here. we chosen a new block. Tides may turn, though. Look at that. The, the Zenith Star is down to 89 and the Gimlet is at 82, so the Gimlet is not in the lead anymore, but look at that. I think we have taken out some of the propulsion, so now we got to hit with the cram cannons. That's just very unlucky for storage here. It's definitely a very formidable design, but is it formidable enough to be able to defeat the Gimlet? That's the question. And <laughs> thanks for everyone, especially the secret advisor slash Corvax for um, Again and again, saying how great the Gimla is as a benchmarking ship, and that might be true. I, I never thought of uh, thought of it like that when I built it, but I'm really happy 
if that's like the new benchmarking ship. That's amazing. Because it's like... Of course I built some years in from the depth and if you're starting new it can be a little bit difficult to build a ship that beats the Gimla. So yeah and people that have played longer than me um, usually can make a ship that beats the Gimla. Depends how much you you know invested in trying to learn the uh, nooks and crannies of, um, from the depth but if you kind of did you can probably beat the Gimla if you have played more than me. <laughs> I don't know if you have. Some of us share the uh, total playtime we had in the Discord. <laughs> I had more than I thought, <laughs> but of course I shouldn't be surprised. Um, <laughs> it's like my main game on this YouTube channel, which is, you know... We are doing some videos and stuff, as you have noticed. Look at that! We're actually... Uh, We're actually probably gonna beat this thing. We're leading now. The Gimli is leading. We're gonna look at the poor state of the Gimli right now, though. Look at this sad thing, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I think it's like... I think it's almost a little bit unlucky for for the Zenith star here to not have sandblasted on the AI. The AI is completely intact and that's like the only area that's completely intact. Most of the cram cannons are kind of damaged. Which is pretty crazy. <laughs> we don't have a cockpit anymore and um, half of the dinner guests uh, all have to stand and duck for cover at times. Well, <clears throat> look at that. We're going low here. The Zenith star is going pretty low. I'd be so surprised if it wins this first one. It is, it is shooting back though, but I, I'll be surprised if it wins this first one. It's still trying to evade our shots here, which is probably making it stay alive a lot longer. It's only been five minutes in game battle, but I don't know, it felt like a lot more. But oh man, we're going dangerously close to the water surface and we're going down to the water surface. It's probably not going back up again. Look at that we have. I hope you didn't have anything important in here. Because that was an EMP surge. Oh, look at that. Who oh, no! The Zenith Star has officially lost the first battle. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very helpless and is about to despawn here. So, let's check out the second round. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna start a second battle exactly right now. And we are sticking here with the Gimla in absolute super slow motion. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I want to check out if these shots... Man, this is a little bit too slow, okay. <laughs> Never mind. I wanna see the first volley here, yeah? I'm just so interested what dealt that... Oh, look at that. Alright. So, this might be a charge laser. Oh, <laughs> you're going straight for the AI, are you? Man, 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 this is gonna be so interesting. Okay, and here we can see the initial blast here. Bam, going through there pretty deeply. Ooh, the laser. The Gimla won't be able to have time to turn, will it? The AI might be sniped out here. It depends a lot on luck and how long that laser surge is staying in the same place. Anyways, that was like the initial blast here. So we kind of ish missed a little bit exactly what happened, I don't know. But the, the laser is still focusing on this area here. So I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't skip armor in this area completely. Because if we had done that, we had, would have been pretty dead now. No AI hit there.
and now it's targeting something else. Oh, damn. That's... <laughs> That's like our accurate detection. Well, well. Our most accurate detection is gone, but what the heck. We might need it, but whatever. So the gimbal seems to be able to turn kind of quick enough to not keep it on the bad side. If the Zenith star would have gone a little closer, I actually think it could have out uh, sped the gimless turning rate, probably. Because, of course, at this range, it's gonna move darn fast to outpace our turning range, and if it was a little bit like closer, it wouldn't need to turn as fast, because like that's regular laws of, I don't know, physics and rotational angular mathematics and whatnot. Anyways, I guess that's good news for the Gimlet. Well. And let's see here. I just want to see, does it have some type of anti-munition system trying to shoot down here? It got some missiles, yeah? Oh, that cramp cannon shot was almost about to hit. And we're digging through here again. It's gonna be interesting to see if the Zenith Star whoops, is able to... Oh lord, look at that! That's a pretty sad cram hit for... Ew, darn! We're losing a lot of power here. Man, does that mean we're going down? Ladies and gentlemen, is the Zenith Star going down? No, it has enough backup power. I guess that Star Reach anticipated to be pretty hurt from the Gimla, which is a good anticipation because uh, it's pretty hard to not get very hurt by the Gimla. It is, after all, a pretty dangerous thing, I'm happy to say. <laughs> like, when we're shooting here, it's it's, it's shooting with such an R RPM, it, sound, it, it looks like the barrels are like lagging or whatever. Look at that. Bam. Look at that. So we're just gonna check out here. Did we have a lucky hit here yet? Just pausing the battle a little bit. No, we did not. It's so much up to if those sand blasters are gonna ch sand blasters. I can't speak apparently. Uh, are gonna target the AI or not? Well, some of the cram cannons are like really sad. Well, I do wonder if our Arcubalista Invictus guns are doing some good action or not. I wonder. I wanna see if this back one shoots. Look at that. Now it's getting sandblasted, so I don't have my hopes for that to happen, really. <laughs> Wait, was that a fire? I think it was. That's the Arcubalista Invictus round. And he's shooting really quickly. I would have expected that one to hit though, because that's so darn fast. But I guess we're just so far away that we're just missing here. Damn, this is, this is a pretty close battle. I feel it can go either way still. <laughs> Look at that. Just dodging all those shells. But the gameplay is so shanky and strong, it just won't go down easily. But now the uh, Zenith star has a lead of 10 percentages. And we're kind of a. We are a bit into the battle now, so that lead is actually significant, especially considering that the laser system seems to be damaged enough. Let's actually check the laser core. The laser core ain't dead. 
I think it's maybe just the pump energy and stuff. Like, m many parts of the laser system or the engine power, possibly. Can it be the... I don't know. Well. Look at... <laughs> Well, anyways, it doesn't really matter. Our lasers are not delivering especially much damage right now, which means it's actually looking like the Zenith Star is gonna win this thing. And stuff is going a little bit slower, you know. I think it all comes down to if the Zenith Star is able to uh, survive all the cram shells popping at it. If it can dodge them all, it probably lives. If it doesn't, it might get into trouble. At such a possibility, I think the tides can turn very quickly. Well, it's taking damage too. Not much damage anymore. Since the laser went down on the Gimla, well, the chances of the Zenith Star, the Millennium Zenith Star, has just increased a lot. But damn, that wasn't a good hit for it. Hmm. Mostly laser systems, so it shouldn't be too sad. You can see that, that uh, at an early round, uh, at an early point of this round, that cram shot would have absolutely possibly eliminated this ship. But. Because the cram cannon it was fired from is so damaged now, that the blast radius of that shot wasn't as bad as it would have been otherwise. The gameless crams are no joke, but if they are damaged as much as they are, well, they kind of become a joke. Sandblasting system is still very much alive. Trying to jump on some of those shots. Ooh, look at that. We're targeting some uh, engine power here, are we? Ooh! We're gonna have less power. Man. We're starting to look a, a, a tad bit sad here, are we not? No, oh, but we have our superstructure left this time. The Millennium the Zenith Star is gathering penalty points because it's oh lords it sunk wow okay so the zenith star has lost both battles which means we have an official win for the gimla wow i didn't expect that well uh, i asked you in the comments a little bit before if you want to see the uh, third battle or not and most of you seem to want to see the third battle, so this time at least we're gonna see the third battle. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we're back here again. And we're gonna play this battle. And of course, this doesn't actually affect the outcome of the battle. The Gimla has still won this battle. We're just here to check out if we play out the third battle, if the results could have been any different uh, for this particular battle or not. I do must say that Star Reach has made an amazing submission with the uh, um, Millennium Zenith Star. It is very good. I, I think it's a very um, competent design. It does dodge a lot of the a lot of the firepower that Gimla comes with. Like we're not hitting very often with our cram cannons. If the Gimli didn't have a laser, it would absolutely not win against this thing. You know, some of the ships that have won against the Gimli, like the Ten Commandments, would be absolutely devastated by the Zenith Star. I do really believe that. So we're gonna... Maybe the Zenith Star would have a return. I thinking, I am thinking right now that I am going to pitch the losers against each other and uh, the best of the losers will be uh, back into the battles because I do of course want to pitch some of the ships that are beating the Gimle against each other to see kind of which one is the best of them. 
but that will be later. We have a lot of gameless submissions to go through still. So if you're building on something that you want to send in, well, join the Discord, uh, find the rules in the description and on Discord, uh, hashtag game events, and you can send in the submission too. There is still some time to do that. Look at that. It's just, the Gimlet just so looks so sad while getting a whooping from this thing. If it just had targeted the AI, you know when we when we are fought the steampunk turtle, <laughs> it kind of almost and I I don't remember if it did annihilate our AI one turn or if it just almost did, but that was damn scary. I think that pack is pretty important. It hasn't been sandblasted yet. Well. 96 versus 89. So it's really getting the lead of the game early on. And the lasers are even trying to target some of these cramps. I don't know if it really matters much. Look at that. See if our pack is gonna shoot here or not. The pack should hit, right? Every time. Oh, oh we're, no, we're just maneuvering. I thought we were going down there for a second. Oh, I think it's pretty cool. I do th I do really, really like the design of this thing, but it, apparently it is from Scarlet Dawn 20, uh, like some previous, I don't know. I have no idea. I didn't check out the in-game designs yet because I haven't really started the campaign, so I'm a noob at this game. I haven't really played a campaign, even though I played for so long. You know, I just got stuck in building stuff. But we're gonna play the campaign. Trust me, it's gonna be either on the Gmodism YouTube or we're gonna have it on uh, the Twitch channel. And if it's on the Twitch channel, the VODs won't be popping up here. Uh, the VODs will be popping up at the Gmodism channel, so you should check that out. By the way, do you like my new, like, channel banners art and stuff because <laughs> I designed some new stuff. I'm pretty happy with it. You might not like it, but do please tell me what you think about it in the comments. My new channel banner. <laughs> it's pretty... I think it's fun. It's a little bit chaotic. I don't know. I, I, I went for a maximalist design this time. The game is down to 79 percentages this time. Um, so this is the best results that the Zenith star has ever gotten. I think this is the best lead it has gotten so far, actually. So that's that's pretty interesting. Maybe it has a chance to win this one. Look at these. These anti-missile missiles are not very well set up, though. They need to be so much faster, they need to wait a little bit before the thrusters activate, they need to... I'm not sure if they have turning thrusters, but... Let's just pause here a little bit quickly. No, they won't, they don't have that. Is that a decoy or something? No, that might be an APN, right? That's probably an APN guidance. But for this size, uh, you should probably have some faster things with turning thrusters. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to hit uh, cram cannons. I do hope I have that in my AMM tutorial. Uh, if not, I need to make a new one. I do know I covered this in videos before, but well, anyways, about that. I need to make a lot more tutorials, that's for certain. Well, it's doing pretty well this time. Well, we're gonna see how the Gimla looks now. Poor thing, look at that. The Arcubalista Invictuses are really sad. The laser system seems to be doing alright. The AI seems to have uh, not been hit anything this time at all, which is good for it, but... Look at that, we're just losing so many blocks. Gonna be pretty interesting to see. And now when we tried it, 
Can you also tell me in the comments if you think having the third battle is worth it or not? Because this is like the first video we do that on. So the, the positives on this is that uh, the, the user can see um, how much of a chance the enemy ship had. Like if it lost two battles and then won the third, it could might as well have won. But if it loses all three, it probably couldn't have won. That's the pros. Uh, the negatives are that the video is going to be longer, so fewer people will kind of like watch all of it, which means that the watch time, uh, or like not the watch time, like the retention time or whatever, will be lower. So it might impact the video's uh, like total views, so that like fewer people will get it recommended. So we, this video might get fewer views because we have the third bell. And that remains to be seen, but that's kind of the pros and cons of this thing. So you'll just have to tell me in the comments what you think and what's your experience. And of course, you're going to be biased because if you're not watching in the third battle, you would have already clicked away, right? <laughs> so that's not like a perfect system, but yeah. I guess that doesn't matter then. Oh, look at that. The Gimli is down to 67 percentages. Wow. Wow, this is definitely the best, the best round that the uh, Millennium Zenith Star has made. Man. Well, sorry mate, but you lost the first two battles, so you're, you're, not, you're not winning this thing, but that was darn interesting. Because this means, like, when, when I see this, it's so close that I know that the Millennium Zenith Star is a component designed to be able to win against the Gimlet. Now, in this battle, it didn't. Um, this last, like, round, it seems like it's gonna win. It really does, but, well, it's already lost. But that's that's kind of why I want to give the best ship in the loser's bracket one more chance. Because we can clearly see it is a good design, man. Look at that. Pretty cool, I think. Uh, I suppose it's gonna lose, but yeah. Well, so that's actually pretty interesting. Um, I don't know if we'll, we'll... Maybe we'll watch like the end of this battle, possibly. Uh, it can be interesting to see, but it's at 59%. It's going to lose. In, anyway, huge thanks to our commissioned officers in the Army of Jumadism. Admiral Scoobrox, Commodore Owen, Lieutenants and or Gravy, Parva Greed and Vincent Veritas. Your continuous support does really help the channel a lot. And with that said, Gimli is at 58 percentages. It is going to lose this battle by most chances. The Zenith Star is at 77 percentages. So and he's still shooting and dealing damage, and I do not think that the Gimli is able to deal much damage against the Millennium Zenith Star anymore. So, with that said, here we can see, you might think that, oh man, the Gimli definitely won that first two battles, it was undefeatable. And uh, if you have clicked off, you won't see this, but um, if you didn't, you can see that, you know, maybe the Gimli just was lucky because the Millennium Zenith Star won the third battle. But anyways, lost the first two, so it's going to the loser's bracket. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little video, by the way, and if you did, leave a like and do subscribe to kind of stay tuned, and I'll see you next time. This is your host, Jim Desm, and I'm signing out.